Ah, I'm going to start again because I didn't have the language ready. <laughs> hey everybody, Adam Savage here in my cave with a tool tip. But today's tool tip is not a specific tool. No, no, no. It is a whole array of tools. What category does this array of tools fall within? Well, it falls within the tools made by a company near and dear to my heart, iFixit. Um, full disclosure, iFixit has sent me many of their toolkits. I have done some stumping for them over the years. I'm a big believer in their tools and also their mission, and I'm gonna talk about that in this video. Uh, but their tools supply uh, 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 a very specific bandwidth of utility, and that is taking apart and repairing and improving your electronics, your computers, your laptops, your phones. Uh, all of these things are now an integral and completely indispensable part of our lives. We're using them for longer and longer. They're getting more and more expensive. Their batteries are inbuilt, so you can't just swap them out. When your iPhone gets really old, what do you do? Well, you can spend a bunch, you know, you can spend 70 bucks and get someone to swap out the battery. Actually, I have no idea how much it costs now. Um, or <coughs> you can repair it yourself. And if you want to repair it yourself, iFixit is the company whose products you want to use. And I have replaced the batteries on over a dozen iPhones and iPods over the years using iFixit's incredible line of tools. Um, I appreciate their tools. It is, it is hard to make tools that are feel good and will last. Uh, and especially when you get into the tiny screwdrivers, the little tiny Phillips, the little Torx bits, all those tamper-proof specialty bits. Um, many companies that make them make them out of absolutely shite metal. Uh, and I would imagine that the micro machining required to make those bits really, really accurate and also super hardened is non-trivial. Uh, there is definitely like a, a, a cost ratio that is being worked out here. iFixit generates a really high level of product. Um, they're not the best uh, possible tools out there, but then they're also not the most expensive. Um, they seek to give you the ability to modify your electronics. Now, this is both a practical and a political frame because Companies like Apple don't want you repairing or modifying their phones. In fact, they want to consider you opening your phone a violation of your warranty. I bought this thing. I own it. I can destroy it if I want to. No one disputes that, but I can't fix it. I can't repair it. I can't do anything with it. What, what kind of ownership is Apple trying to redefine? Well, Apple isn't the only one. John Deere is another great example. John Deere, their brand new tractors uh, are not repairable by your average farmer and they, re they won't let you repair it. They, don't, they, want their, they want to sell tractors that are black boxes. And when you need to get it fixed, you have to go to a licensed, certified repair person. Well, come on, farmers, are D are the original DIY seat of the pants engineers. They are out there every day slogging through the most caustic conditions, outdoors, in the sun, in the rain, the ultraviolet, all of that, uh, all of that wear and tear on your equipment. You've got to be able to fix it. Uh, and there is a movement afoot that counters this stance of Apple's and John Deere's and other companies like them. And it's called the right to repair movement. And what it seeks to do is it seeks to define, because it needs to be defined apparently, uh, what ownership means and what rights we have to modify and adjust and repair the things that we have purchased. Um, Apple and John Deere would like there to be kind of a, they, they want to draw a, draw a new line in the sand about what rights you have when you buy something. And iFixit takes a solid stance against that. Uh, and they don't just do it with their tools, which I'm going to cover in a second. They also do it with lots of political outreach. Uh, and truth be told, full disclosure, I have done some political outreach for iFixit. I know those guys. They have sent me many of their tools. Um, yeah, no, they're great. I'm going to cover iFixit's line of tools in just a second, but I want to talk about my radicalization of this. In the early aughts, 
uh, or the late 90s, Leatherman came out with a wave, a sea change of multi-tools. Uh, I instantly fell in love, became a lifelong adept of, of Leatherman's line of tools. I built this belt holster in my shop on Bartlett Street, and I wore this on my belt for the better part of a decade. But when I wanted to modify my Leatherman, I was hindered. Uh, the screws, the eight screws that you can see that hold this Leatherman together, four on each side, look like Torx bits, but they've got a, a little uh, pin in the middle of the Torx bit. Here, you can take a look there and see. See that little pin there in the middle? Yeah. That little pin is what's called a tamper-proof pin. You can't just stick any Torx bit in it. You need a Torx bit with a hole in it. Well, they, they make those, they sell those. So I went to the hardware store and I looked, asked where the bin was for tamper-proof Torx bits and they sent me to it. And I went looking for one that fit this and none of them did. And that's when I noticed, wait a minute, I'm gonna hold this up again, that, and I'm not even sure if you're gonna be able to see this. But what I noticed was, this is not a Torx bit. No, 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 because a Torx bit has six lobes. This one has five. I would later learn this is called a pentalobe Torx bit, a pentalobe tamper-proof Torx bit. And here's the rub. When I went online looking for a tamper-proof pentalobe Torx bit, I found out that I was not allowed to buy one. In fact, the company that makes the bits and the screws requires you to register with them as an original equipment manufacturer in order for them to send you either the screws or the bit. Now they do this for reasons that I don't agree with. I want to be able to modify and repair my equipment. Um, eventually, I was able to find a pentalobe tamper-proof Torx bit and it was given and gifted to me by my friends at iFixit. Um, and let's just take a look at the kind of amazing stuff. This is my sort of master iFixit kit with all of the stuff that you could ever need. And this is what I use to repair my, my, AirPod, my iPods and my iPhones. Um, and so it's, it's not just, just to be clear, when you purchase one of their kits, it's not just a set of the bits. There are also uh, the spudgers and pry tools for removing the cases. There are suction cups for pulling the screens. There are these little different thicknesses of guitar picks. They've really made many, many different formulations of tools to assist you in the complex <laughs> <laughs> and super difficult task of replacing batteries in a modern smartphone. Um, I recommend their entire suite of tools. They have many, many different toolkits for all sorts of different repairs for computers, phones, and other uh, electronics. Um, I believe in them both for their output and for their political stance. And that is why today I am recommending that you obtain yourself one of iFixit's toolkits. At, at the very least, everyone should have one of their screwdriver bit kits of all these esoteric and strange tamper-proof bits in their collection. Uh, there's nothing worse than taking something apart and getting to a piece of it that you can't touch because you don't have the right bit. That is my tool tip today. Thank you guys for joining me. I appreciate you letting me talk just a little bit of politics. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Stay safe.